The following podcast is provided by Athera Pharma and Answers for Elders Radio. And welcome everyone to the Answers for Elders Radio Network. And it's an exciting, wonderful summer season here in the Pacific Northwest. So if you're watching me on YouTube, you're going to see me with my backyard in the background. And of course, we always have our Washington State evergreen trees as I'm talking to you from Seattle, Washington. And I am talking to a very important guest today because here's the thing that's going on. Um, So many of you listeners may have a loved one that you're starting to see signs of you know, they're asking the same question over and over again. You're, they're not really tracking 100% like they used to. The pandemic has brought forward a lot of, you know, more uh, behavior traits that you're not used to. Maybe there's just some things that aren't quite right. Um, if that's the case, this is an interview for you because we are very honored to have Amy Shank, who is a certified dementia practitioner. And Amy, welcome to Answers for Elders Radio from all the way in Florida. So we're kind of at top uh, the opposite corners of the U.S. Uh, Susie and we are. And thank you so much for having me. I was thinking how beautiful your background looks. And today we are going to have a record high in Southwest Florida, not because it isn't hot enough for heaven's sake. So I would love to be coming to you from outside. Uh, However, I think that might be a little, um, a little, little well, you know, we, we cherish our summers here in the Pacific Northwest because Obviously, um, we have, you know, pretty much from November till June, <laughs> we have kind of <laughs> gloomy weather pretty much through. So when really fall, it's really um, exciting. And of course, I hate to tell you today, but we're only going to get up about 79 today. Yeah, so. please don't tell me that. <laughs> I would prefer you didn't tell me that. Actually, your gloomy season is our perfect season. So again, yeah. my favorite months here, November to March, beautiful oh, sun, shine, yes. not so much, it's not so much of that, um, that humidity, but you know what, there's no perfect place. So no. I think what we do is we enjoy where we are when it is the best. Yes, and that's we do. why they have air conditioning. And we also have heat. To yes. kind of mitigate those those experiences. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So yes, I've um, spent a lot of time in Florida in my mm-hmm. past. My mother used to be actually be a snowbird, so she mm-hmm. used to live our gloomy season down in <laughs> um, in uh, Cocoa Beach, and then she would come up to home the rest of the time. But mm-hmm. I am I'm so excited, Amy, to talk to you because obviously. Um, Since the pandemic, um, I've been hearing all kinds of new statistics come out of the impact of quarantine, of of seniors not taking care of themselves because of isolation, not getting proper medications on time because they're too afraid to go out even to pick up a prescription. Um, You know, all of those different things have contributed to um, a rise in the, the whole impact of Alzheimer's disease in this country. And Amy, I would love to have you share with us a little bit about, you know, where are we right now in all of this? Well, and Suzanne, you're exactly right. Um, Before I came to my current role, I did work with the Alzheimer's Association. And one of the amazing things, among many things that the association does, is annually they publish the facts and figures report. And one of the things that we found out this year there are over 6 million individuals and is that there was a 17% increase in deaths from Alzheimer's disease. Now, having said that, I know that's quantifiable information, but since really I worked in that environment and worked with families and worked with assisted living communities and work with people who were really impacted, Mm -hmm. let me tell you some of the things that I saw. One is we know that social interaction is critical for all of us. Having that personal connection, even if you're an introvert, there still is that connection that we all need. Absolutely. And when we look at what happened over the past probably two and a half years now, 
so Especially many they're older, the more the older they are in a community. Mm-hmm. They, because of health concerns, they may not have been able to see any of their loved ones. And one of the wonderful things about residential communities is that people can be with other individuals and share meals and have activities. Well, unfortunately, all of that amazing benefit was impacted because of health concerns Mm -hmm. and infection control concerns. So even those individuals who are in that kind of an environment for all the right reasons, weren't able to take advantage of it. So we saw that as well, along with anguish on the part of caregivers. Yeah, And that was one of the things and having worked with caregivers that really was distressing because so many caregivers, if their loved ones were in a community, weren't able to go in, weren't able to be with them. Yeah, yeah. Family caregivers at home, the same, the same type of challenges. Many times those individuals who were caring for someone at home, they could get out. Yeah. Even a trip to the grocery store or just to walk outside just to get a change of scenery. All of those things were impacted. So unfortunately, this incredibly serious health condition of COVID impacted and already absolutely it did and and i think too there's a lot just the whole fear factor i think Mm. you know i think about in the earlier days of the pandemic before we had vaccines and before we had things you know there were so many of us and i know friends that were so terrified that are still having a hard time getting Mm -hmm. outside their homes because they're been they pulled themselves in mentally outside stimulus is stressful it's Mm -hmm. over and especially if you already have cognition uh challenges is i mean is that correct amy i mean absolutely i think i think for all of us everyone was impacted with by the pandemic no one was unscathed some people obviously and some families were devastatingly impacted Mm -hmm. i think though that our whole way of life changed So sometimes as a result, you have to change your habits and you have to, as you said, I have people who are very, very fearful and rightly so Mm -hmm. before we had uh, the uh, immunizations. You know, I think many of us have friends or or know people who were impacted with the disease and unfortunately people Mm -hmm. who passed away Mm -hmm. because it was in the news all the time. So you couldn't get away from it. So I think some of that hesitancy, we learned a new kind of way of life. So yes, how to did. kind of survive in, in the situation that we had. And while it was probably very helpful during that time period, there were some things that were very negative. So not being able to get out, not being able to do some of the things that really gave give many of us a great deal of fulfillment, whether it's going and going to the senior center. Mm-hmm. Playing cards with friends, <clears throat> going to the VFW, have, going to your place of worship. I mean, those yeah. things that, again, are kind of the fabric of, of all of the things that we hold dear. We couldn't do that. And so can that have exacerbated the decline? You know, potentially. And I know we're looking at, there are studies that are looking at that now. Sure. We also have heard that we don't really know the lasting impacts of COVID. I mean, no. We don't know. It's mysterious. Why does one person get it? Why does another person not get it? Why does someone who's been vaccinated and boost get it? I and mean, it's, it's truly a mystery. So there are other things going on to figure that out. But Correct. what we don't know, what are the long-term effects on the brain? And how does that impede people's cognition? And one of the things I know you know, Suzanne, you know, quite frankly, even if you do have some cognitive issues mm-hmm. and you're challenged a bit, in the routine of your own home, sometimes people are able to do reasonably well as long as they're safe. Yeah. But it's that routine. And what have we done? We've impacted people's routines. Yeah. So it's and I always said when position. we were when we were in con when when we were in uh, quarantine, it's like the only person I ever saw for like 
weeks at a time was my husband other than yes. you know, zoom and everything like that. Okay. And, and it's amazing because I'm very grateful that I still like him, which yes, is, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> which, I understand. You, you know, when you think about that piece alone to have mm -hmm. one person like that, but, but it's really been a challenging time. And certainly, um, closer contact means, uh, you know, overwhelming situations. And one of the things that I know with the pandemic, even though in many, most cases, I would say the senior living community is probably the safest place for seniors to be during that time, even though they were in their little apartments mm -hmm. for a lot of the time. On the other hand, um, there's a family caregiver. There's a lot of families that chose to bring their, their loved ones home and what the impact has been on families where a lot of people were out, you know, without work, they lost jobs mm -hmm. and now they're having to take care of a loved one. And so certainly that's been an overwhelming situation. Has it not Amy? Absolutely. And I think one of the things I always say, unless you're in the healthcare profession, mm -hmm. you didn't go to school to become a caregiver. No, you did not. And those skills may or may not come naturally to you. And I'll also tell you, some of us who are professional caregivers, I started my career as a nurse many, many years ago, may yes. not be great family caregivers. And I will put myself in that category. Yeah. And as you said, Suzanne, those, those families and friends who brought their loved ones home from a, uh, a more structured senior living situation, Right. Those individuals already needed a higher level of care. So we had families who were bringing their loved ones home. And I understand that because of the difficulty with not being able to visit. Yeah. I think in some instances, and it's done out of love, I know that's true. Sometimes that level of care is more than someone can even imagine or exactly. anticipate. And I think that brings up a lot of feelings, whether it be guilt, or frustration, or gosh, why did I do this? Or gosh, why didn't I do this? Or why can't I or, be? This is way over my pay grade here. I, you Absolutely. Know so and Amy, I really want to make sure that we have um, contact because we are here courtesy of Athera Pharma. And um, I just want to put a plug out to all the great things that Athera does in clinical trials. And so as we close today, Amy, you and I are going to be together, but I'm going to give a little shout out to um, finding the website because there's we're going to be talking about clinical trials today mm -hmm. how we can get in the front of medical research and things like that to help uh, you know eliminate and I do believe there will be a cure someday so for everyone that's interested that would like to learn more about a clinical trial go to the website if you want to learn more to liftadtrial.com that is www.liftadtrial.com and amy will you come back with me next segment and we're going to talk about brain health and caregiving right after this we at answers for elders thank you for listening did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.